We're at the BNBL Championship at the very end of the summer. So this is actually the game I'm looking forward to of the three tonight. And this is probably the most even game going into it. Are you kidding me? We've seen him do that before. work. Nice move to the basket there for the showstoppers. To have those long arms and really good hands, it's a major advantage. Oh, hey. bring it down the house! What a game here in the girls' 59 division. Hey, hello everybody, welcome to the Tobin Community Center in Roxbury. As we conclude our 2018 Boston Neighborhood Basketball League regular season tonight with a boys BNBL 15 and under matchup as tonight Team New England will be taking on Mission. Hello everybody, I'm Pat Flaherty, I'm my partner this week, Seth Orensky. And Seth, there's a lot of different sites in BNBL where we say a lot of Good teams and good talent come out of those sites. This is one of them. Tobin Community Center, a lot of good players come out of here. Well, you just look up behind us, one of the banners, Shabazz Napier, one of the more well-known players who have come out of the city recently. That's right. Really good basketball, typically one of the hotter gyms as well, which just ups the uh, the intensities. When it's hot, typically the emotions flare. We've got a really good game for you. The top team is Mission, but they haven't faced the team that won a year ago. Team New England and AAU team has been traveling over the summer. So this is a really big meet. These two teams will play again in the playoffs, trying to earn a spot at UMass Boston this year at the 15 under level with a chance to hoist the title. That's right. These two teams have been in the finals many times before in many years past, so I don't think it's a, an unrealistic expectation to see these two teams in the finals once again here in 2018. Now for more on this game, we're going to go to our sideline reporter, Richard Damas, who's got an update for us. Richard, what do you have? Thanks, Pat. And talking to Coach Charles Davis earlier, he told me he wants to play everybody tonight. At seven and one, and with the tops he already clinched, his team really has nothing to play for right now. So he plans on really loading up the bench and getting everybody involved. With the team he's playing against, Team New England, very competitive. Coach Davis says they do everything well, and so to defeat them, they're really gonna have to slow down the tempo, limit their possessions, and play strong press defense. With that being said, should be a great game. Back to you at the studio, Pat. Thanks very much, Richard. And that's an important to note that, you know, Team Mission is 7-1, and one, so they don't, they have the number one seed here. They don't have to play for something. So we'll see how that maybe plays out down the stretch. Will he play his guys if it's a close game late? Uh, I think that's interesting. Chuck Davis has been sitting on 16 BNBL titles for a while, knowing that he probably has some tricks up his sleeves and maybe he doesn't want to show too much today. They might have some exotic presses. Maybe they have some set plays coming out of a timeout or off an inbounds, but they won't show today, that they want to keep in their back pocket knowing they might have to beat this team in the playoffs. On the other side, for this Team New England team, they play together all summer, but they want to get a little more momentum going into the playoffs, and they're a very interesting team because they have a couple of 15-year-olds who are taller than both of us by a couple of inches. So it's going to be interesting for Mission. How do they rebound? They have some guys who have rebounded well this year, but they haven't necessarily been giving up six, seven, eight inches. Yeah, no question. I mean, when you see that height advantage, you got to think about rebounds. And then also, Team Spartans, even though they have the worst record, their 13 and under team won the BNBL championship last year. So all those guys are a little bit older, or at least the 13-year-olds are. They're on this team now this year. they got the same coach, Joe Chapman, who's certainly familiar with BNBL. And certainly these guys want some revenge, and they probably want to get back to that championship to make it back-to-back -back seasons. It looks like we're just about set to go here at the Tobin Community Center. So uh, Team Tobin or rather team mission in the red as usual on the left-hand side of your screen, and then team New England on the right-hand side of your screen in the black jerseys. And as Seth mentioned, very hot as usual in the Tobin Community Center. It's sort of a BNBL tradition to have the Tobin Community Center hotter than almost any other gym in the city. Uh, so we'll see how conditioning plays a factor tonight. I mean, the 15 and under game, usually conditioning is not a problem because you got guys who play high school basketball, yet they have the, the shorter halves, the 16-minute halves, as compared to the 20-minute halves at 18 and under. Well, I think conditioning is there. Uh, it's actually cooler than it typically is because it's cooled down a little bit in Boston. Thank goodness for everybody who's out here. It's got a nice little crowd. Uh, I'm really interested to see the different style of play. I mean, you have... Kalu Anya and the guy who's taking the tip here for this Team New England team, Abdullah Muhammad, who's a solid 6'4 at 15 or under. On the other side for Michigan, I don't think they have a player taller than Amari Ward who will take the tap. Even with the uh, tall hair, I don't think he quite cracks six foot. So it'll be interesting to see how much pressure they put on the ball trying to avoid allowing Team New England 
to get the ball in down low. Team New England controls the opening tap. We're underway here at the Tobin Community Center. Feed it inside to the big fella. Muhammad tries to squeeze it in, but got caught underneath the hoop on that one. Yeah, a nice job of adjusting there, getting into his body without fouling. Nice drive, runner no good off the back iron that time from Christian Rojas, and back comes Team New England. Off the up fake. Tony Felder looking to make a play there. Probably should have gone up with it. Yeah, I think he was a little bit too passive there, the pass behind his teammate, but they got Abdullah Muhammad for three seconds. The problem with being a big man and this big at his age is he's still growing into his body a little bit, uh, and his teammates are, obviously they're gonna look for him, but if you look for him constantly, you become a little bit predictable, and right now, Michigan's done a good job of really putting enough bodies around him that he hasn't been able to get comfortable touches in the opening minutes. See, these two teams know each other pretty well. That's why we saw a couple of turnovers there at half court. And sometimes when both these teams are so geared up, you see guys, you know, going towards the basket, just losing the ball because they're so anxious to get the first hoop. Well, and you, you factor in being on TV. It doesn't happen that often, especially at their age range. Uh, it's a little bit exciting, and some of that shows in the nerves, trying to do just a bit too much. We saw assistant coach John Jackson for Team Mission earlier. Chuck Davis, also the head coach for Team Mission. He's got the clipboard. Three-pointer on the way. Again, rattles in and out. Rebound comes down to Amari Ward. And Ward has been one of the best players for the team this year. He's their top rebounder, and he's going to have to do that today. But also one of their leaders in hustle plays, a rare stat kept by Chuck Davis and his staff. Rojas gets fouled on his way to the basket, so he'll get two free throws. See if he can break the scoreless tie with a minute and a half gone by here in the early going. I really like this approach from Mission. They've had two offensive possessions at both times going to the rim. That time, Mohammed wasn't able to get over and help out the smaller defender, but they're clearly not going to be afraid of the size of this Team New England team. That could change with the big block or two, but thus far, a really strong start for Chuck Davis' side. Rojas goes two for two from the charity stripe, so two to nothing, mission on top here early on. Good swing of the basketball there for Team New England. Tough runner but Muhammad comes away with the offensive rebound and he's gonna go to the charity strike. Amari Ward still pleading his case. He almost kept his hand straight up, but a little bit tilted into the body. You're gonna see it here. He steps into the body there and at the top of his hands are down rather than straight up. That's why he got ball, but also a little bit of the wrist. And Muhammad able to knock down that first free throw. And clearly his size is causing a problem. Already three rebounds. That was his first offensive rebound, and it led to the first points of the game for this Team New England side. Now there's a scrum for the basketball at half court. It's going to be a jump ball. And that will stay with Team Mission. I think that was Jamari Cope, a really nice job after his team lost the ball just shy of half court of diving on the hardwood to keep the ball alive. We're getting tied up at the top of the key, and they're going to whistle Taquan Williams for a foul. And we got a substitution for Team New England as Williams heads to the bench. The inbounds pass, and what a block inside for Muhammad. That's the issue, and Muhammad is just that much taller. The first lay-in does fall down that time for Team New England. Zion Simmons able to convert. Now Team New England with a one-point lead. Mission on the fast break, and Muhammad is going to be called for the body check right there. 
Yeah, that's a really nice job on the take, keeping the ball as far away as possible from Muhammad after he had the big block the last time. This time he can't get his hands in there. And an easy foul on Abdullah. So Hector Galazara now at the free throw line for Team Mission. Galazara misses the first. He's the, one of the team's top rebounders, second in assists, first in blocks. And on the year, Hector had come in shooting 50%, 12 of 24 from the free throw line. Oh for 2 from the line that time is Galazara. So still a one-point lead for Team New England. And Muhammad just came out of the game. So we're going to see a different look from Team New England. They can't feed the big man constantly. Point on the way, but short that time from New England. But coming away with the rebound. And getting fouled on his way to the room was Keontae Beal. So he'll get a couple of free throws. Yeah, Timmy O'Toole with the offensive rebound that time, but it was, if it wasn't O'Toole, that would have been one of his teammates. They had three players crashing hard into the paint. That could be a good thing for Mission. If they can get those defensive rebounds, they might be able to leak out, but thus far they've struggled to protect the glass on their own half. First free throw is missed for Beals. Substitution for New England, heading to the bench is Zion Simmons. And I think that's the other big man, Kalu Anya. Not quite as tall as Abdullah Muhammad, but still well over six feet tall. So they're going to cycle those two in and out, trying to keep that big advantage down low. Beals knocks down the second, then he'll head to the bench. So Chapman emptying his bench here early on. Both teams now two for four from the free throw line. Cool, nice pass inside, reverse lay in, no good from Anya, but he gets his own rebound back to O'Toole, give and go. Three second violation, I believe, on Timmy O'Toole. Sometimes these younger guys, especially, they, you know, coaches like the extra pass, but when you make a couple of too many extra passes, that's going to get in trouble. I agree, but I also like the fact that the referee is calling three seconds today, because a lot of times, especially at the younger levels, the referees let a lot go. And at the 15 and under level, when you have so many players who are playing high level, high school, or even AAU, you don't want to let these players get into bad habits. And That's right. thus far, we've seen it for Team New England. They have been a little bit uh, hesitant to come out of the paint. They've been called for it. Uh, but it also means we're going to see guys who are better adjusting come the fall. So mission with another turnover, and Chuck Davis and his squad Going to take a timeout here with 8.41 left to go in the first half. Two-point lead for Team New England. Both teams offensively, you know, having a little bit of a struggle. You see the replay on that one. And they're going to call him travel there. Looks like he might have gotten tripped up. I don't But quite, he also shows us his ninja skills at the end of the game. I don't quite see the travel there just because it, he didn't quite have possession as he was taking steps and then got rid of it before he could actually take steps with the ball. But, I mean... These referees probably have the hardest job today because they not only are working this game, they worked the prior game. It's very hot, and these guys are a few years older than these 15-year-olds. Uh, it's a lot of running at this temperature. And normally they have three games at the toe, but they actually had a forfeit. Okay, they just came out of a timeout. It looked like Mission wasn't ready to go. But it actually works in their favor. Team New England steps out of bounds, so Mission Gets it back here, coming out of the timeout. I like this full court pressure that forces yet another turnover. Ofadale to the basket, and Nick is going to head to the free throw line. Really nice take. We've seen a couple of these guys uh, try to get a little too fancy. I mean, this time he, he spun, but drew the contact. And the good thing was, as soon as it, the ball was released, he was looking for the offensive re rebound, recognizing that it might not go in. That's where Team New England has had the big advantage right now. They really are dominating on the glass. See if Adale off the spin move. And he cannot convert at the free throw line. Ward with another rebound for Mission. The 
one stat that Chuck Davis doesn't keep tabs of is how many points each player has. It makes it a little bit harder on us to figure out who the go-to offensive player is. You'd probably think that it's one of Ward or Galarza or even Philip Rooney because those are the team's top players, but thus far it doesn't seem like they have a go-to guy on offense. They've been held without a basket here, a made field goal uh, almost halfway through this first half, and, and we haven't seen someone who's demanding the ball. Yeah, you know Chuck Davis wants to spread it around as the three-pointer goes down that time. I believe that's Philip Rooney. Chuck Davis was telling us before the game he had a couple number changes, so Rooney wearing number eight, able to get that first made basket and their first lead in a while. And that's a travel that time on Kalu Anya. So Philip Rooney now wearing number eight. We had him as number four on our roster. So Philip Rooney knocking down that last three. New mission, or mission rather, with a one point lead. And now we get a traveling violation. It's going to go back to Team New England. It's pretty easy to make the mistake. Mission versus New Mission. We're so used right. to seeing both the boys and girls team. And honestly, some of the players in this game probably will end up at New Mission uh, either this year or in the coming coming years during their high school career. That jumper knocked down by Anya. Yeah, New Mission High School actually used to play their home games in this gymnasium as well years ago. So Even more reasons to make the mistake. This pressure defense has caused some real problems for Mission thus far. They've been unable to control the ball just past the half-court line, and now they're able to get in their half-court offense. And the runner is good that time from Philip Rooney. Really good take. Able to stay up in the air and then just push it just over the rim. O'Toole tries for a runner, can't get it, gets his own miss, and puts it back up and in. I love what Joe Chapman's squad is doing. They're getting good shots down low, and they're not necessarily hitting them, but they're doing a good job of following their shot, getting those offensive rebounds. And that's why they had the one-point advantage. Right. O'Toole now whistled for the trip. As it looked like Anthony Guevara's feet got tangled up there with O'Toole. I believe we're in the bonus now as uh, Guevara's going to enter the free throw line. Awful early for the bonus, but then again, there's been a, it's been a very physical game early on. And Guevara misses the front end, so here comes New England coming right back. And getting fouled on the jumper is Keontae Beals. He'll head to the free throw line. Both these teams slapping at the basketball out there in the first half. Yeah, that's, that's problematic. You not only miss the front end, but then you're late getting back on defense and you give up two free throws. He clearly got the left arm. Right now, this mission team needs to just settle in a little bit and try to find a, a better way of breaking this press. Beals knocks down the first free throw. Substitutions for Team New England. As Zion Simmons back in the ball game. Beals look good in that second free throw. See a full court press from Team New England. Ward off the spin move. Gets his shot blocked inside by Muhammad. Short jumper from Guevara, and he gets fouled. He'll go back to the free throw line for Team Mission. Well, and, and that's the issue right now for Mission. As soon as Muhammad comes back in, it becomes a lot more difficult to get those good looks at the basket. Is he, I was not sure if he fully got the ball, but he definitely altered the shot a lot. And now they've just been struggling so much from the free throw line. He's finally able to knock one down. I mean, they've been to the line a lot, but they've shooting about 50% or worse here in the first half. Guevara knocks down both, so Mission ties it up here at nine with 245 left to go in the first half new mission now or team mission four for seven for the strike turnover created by mission new england grabs it right back heck of a drive that time and getting fouled on his way to the basket with zion simmons 
Zion got bailed out a little bit there as a player ended up underneath him that caused the foul. There wasn't really any contact until he decided he was going to get up in the air and then stayed there for a while. But another good take and a chance for Zion to give his team the lead once again. New England creating points off of turnovers. They now have six steals in the first half. Which is a bit surprising because the other side mission has one and you'd think that the smaller team, the speedier team would try to pressure the ball, but they've really been pushing back a little bit, trying to get numbers back to avoid giving up easy baskets to the bigs of this Team New England side. Simmons two for two, now a two point lead for Team New England. Guevara trying to look inside for Malik Lee. Mission right, coming right back, and that time Galarza is going to get two more free throws. That was a perfect pass from Guevara. Unfortunate that Lee wasn't able to handle it, but then Lee did a great job of getting back, forced the turnover, and again, I love the fact that Mission is not afraid to take the ball at Muhammad. It's the second or third time that they've either been able to draw a foul or pick up some easy points. Lars uh, unable to hit the first free throw. Another substitution now coming back in for Team New England is Nick Ofadale. And another missed free throw that time from Galarza. Wide open underneath for the layup is Ofadale. That's a great job by Ofadale. He was wide open for about four or five seconds. Rather than scream out and aware, alert the defense, he just knew that Felder was going to find him eventually, and a good pass from Felder. Open three, well off the mark. Here comes Ofadale quickly up the floor. Finish no good. Offensive rebound and putback is good. That time by Kalu Anya. Anya with the steal. Now into the corner. Create another steal. Nice play. And that's going to be a travel to the top of the key by Keontae Beal. So that'll go back to mission with 48 seconds left in the half. Little 6 0 run right now for Team New England to take the largest lead of the game. Big, big offensive possession for mission. Not only do they have to not turn it over, they need to get a good look at the basket here with under a minute to play. And that's an interesting call where it could have been out of bounds, could have been a block, but Mission's got to change their press break focus right now. Every single time they're bringing the ball across half court right next to the sideline, that sideline's adding a third defender and it's making it way too easy for Team New England to force turnovers. Larza continues his struggles at the free throw line. Now 0 for 5 here in the first half. He'll have one more. Make it 0 for 6. And Hector coming in, I mean, 50% free throw shooter. That's not good, but you'd expect him to hit a couple of them. And right now, that's a big reason why they are down by 6. Anya with a jumper buries it from the baseline. Steal at midcourt. Williams coming right back, rather Simmons. Put back is good from Anyu. That was actually Beals, the other big man, next to Anyu on that particular Yeah, play. it is Beals. Then Beals gets the steal. Beals out on the break, can't finish. Put back is good from Tony Felder. Heck of a run to end the half that time for Team New England. They're now on top 20 to nine here at the break. And Boy, it was a back and forth game for most of that half, but that run at the end, right in the last minute there, Team New England just really ran off with 13 0 run, I believe. They're still changing the scoreboard up a little bit, and it's all caused by the defense. The press has been so effective, and then their rebounding advantage on the offensive end. They have more offensive rebounds than Mission has on their own defensive half, and that's been a huge reason 
why it's a 22 to nine game. And it felt like even when it was nine seven that the gate, the teams were separated by a little bit more with Team New England holding advantage. I don't think that this game has been this far apart, but Team New England deserved the lead and now Mission's gonna have to show a little bit of change in strategy here in the second half to get back into the contest. No question, question, I'm sure Coach Davis is going to say two things to Team Mission right now. He said, take care of the, ba the basketball because you've had, I don't know how many turnovers now, probably almost 10. And then free throws. I mean, free throws have been horrible for Mission so far. And box out. They're not getting a body on the bigger players. That's how you draw an over-the-back call. That's how you force the ball out on the opposing team. If they're just going up, it looks like a, it, it's a drill right now on offense for them. Miss the shot, everybody crash the paint, leave one guy back, and, and that's why they have this big advantage. No question. Uh, for more on this game, we're going to go to our sideline reporter, Richard Damas, who's got one of the coaches, and he's going to talk to him right now. Richard? I'm here with Coach Chapman right now. His team currently leads New Mission 22-9. to Coach, what did your team do so well in the first half to get out to this type of lead? <laughs> to be honest, nothing. New uh, Mission's just made some mistakes. We're playing slow. Defensively, we're reaching. We're not beating them to spots. We're not rotating well. If they don't turn the ball over as much, the score is 22 to nine them. They just happen to turn the ball over three, four, five possessions at the end of the half, and that's what really got us out. It seemed like in the first half, they were really able to get to the free throw line, you know, slow down the pace, slow down the tempo. That's something that I heard coach was really trying to do as far as, you know, slowing down what you guys do best. How are you guys still able to get, I mean, what, so what changed? You got a couple fast break points late in the game, and now your team's up 21 to nine. Like, why was it so hard to keep them out of the paint? Basically, we were just slow rotate, rotation-wise. I, I, I don't have an answer for that. I just know that defensively, we've been better than that all year. And for, and most coaches are looking and say, you only gave up nine points and a half, that's great D. No, I hold these guys to a higher standard, and I feel like nothing against the mission, uh, missions ball handlers, but we made it easy on them because we weren't showing the ref our hands. We were reaching, which put them in a bonus eight minutes into the half. So. On the sidelines, I'm sorry, you're talking a lot about pace and, you know, go and go and getting your place and run. You said you wanted to get out in transition and really just play an up and down kind of game and control the tempo. Yes. What are you expecting from your guys in the second half? Oh, we're, they're going to play to their capability this half because I'm sure my uncle Al and, and my other assistant coach, Coach Brian, really got these guys to pick it up. We'll play a lot faster and a lot cleaner in this half. Looking forward to another great half, Coach. Yes, thank Good you luck. for having us. Yep, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks very much, Richard. Thanks, Coach Chapman. And, uh, you know, he made a good point there when he was talking about how, you know, his team didn't necessarily play that well in the first half. We saw offensively especially that their execution wasn't great. So we'll see if maybe their offensive execution will be a little bit better in the second half as we are about to start the second half here at the Tobin. Well, I think that's become a big thing in New England where even when you win, uh, you think you can do better because there's been so many championship teams at the higher levels and that coaching philosophy of Bill Belichick has uh, filtered down to the lower levels. I, I, did, I did like the threat there at the end that they're going to play a lot better. Uh, the fact that they do play together all year long, they know what they're capable of doing. This isn't a team that meets a couple times a week over the summer so we'll see if team new england can be a little bit more consistent because i do agree they didn't play all that well in the first half that time on the break it's keontae beal scoring the layup to get them going again in the second half tony felder's had a couple of really nice passes leading to easy baskets for his teammates in the last two to three minutes that shot's blocked by muhammad but it's philip rooney hanging on to it another turnover here comes felder on the break. Able to finish acrobatically for Team New England. A lot of times on teams that are this big at a level like this, all you focus on are the bigs. Muhammad's been good and Anya's been good. But Felder is the guy who really leads this team. He has really good court vision. We've seen him hit some baskets, unable to make that three. But he's been a big part of why they haven't been turning the ball over nearly as much as Mission has. Taquan Williams there for the putback. 29 to nothing run, or excuse me, 19 to nothing run, if I can adjust my math real quick. 19 to nothing run going on, or 18 to nothing run going on right now. Yeah, that's not too shabby. Win. Especially because it's 18 to nothing in about four, four and a half minutes. Nice drive there from Mission. Count the basket and one. That time for Amari Ward. It's a really nice take by 
Amari, not just to get the ball to the basket, but he goes into the defender to draw that little bit of contact to get the foul and hits the shot. Now, if he can actually hit a free throw, I think that might be what makes Chuck Davis the happiest. Let's see if he can get it rolling here in the second half at the free throw line. We always talk about when teams change baskets, sometimes their free throws go down a little easier. And Ward knocks down the first. The opposite of the broadcaster's curse. Those are Ward's first three points of the game. We've talked about he's one of their better players, better rebounder, uh, better passer, but finally gets his offense involved. And there's the third three-second call of the game against Team New England. Joe Chapman can't believe it. There was a defender right next to his big Beals there, but they've been calling it. And at this point, the players have to be cognizant of that fact and keep an internal count in their heads. Mission again out of the fast break. Rudy knocks down the floater there for Mission. He has some really nice skills in that offensive tool bag. That was a great take, driving through a couple players and then the floater in, in the lane. That was one of the best offensive plays we've seen today. Rudy. No good off the back iron that time. But he gets his own steal and the layup for Mission. Now all of a sudden, Mission clawing right back. 11-point lead for Team New England. Little 7-0 run in about a minute plus. That's what Mission needed. Now can they get some defensive stops? Loader no good that time. But again, offensive rebounds are fueling this New England team. And there were just no red jerseys there on the offensive rebound. No box outs. Chuck Davis is going to be really upset with his team when he watches the tape. Really nice drive that time from Keontae Beals. Well, it, it's easy when you're scoring on your second and third chance every time to get your offensive numbers to look better. Beals now off the steal. Nice feed inside. Block inside by Mission. And I think they had... Uh, did they step out of bounds? Yeah, I think they had Rooney catching the sideline there, trying to tiptoe. It's a bad break. When you're down by 13, you need everything going your way. And he was on the line. He was just barely on the line. Inside to O'Toole. Timmy can't finish. Rebound comes down to Ward. Turnover again by Mission. Quickly up the floor they go. That's Simmons for the fast break layup. And any time that Mission turns the ball over, especially when it's in the offensive end and they don't have numbers back, it's going to be easy points. And there's another turnover where Mission only sends one player back because the rest of the guys have their heads down frustrated. Felder to Beals on the alley-oop there. And now Coach Chuck Davis wants to call a timeout for Team Mission. Here with just under 11 minutes left to go in the second half. And if Team Mission isn't careful in the next couple of minutes, we could sort of see this lead stretch out and see the game get away from them. Folks, if you want to follow us on social media, you can go to our Facebook page. Go to Facebook and search for Game of the Week Boston. Just type that URL in and you'll find our Facebook page. A lot of good stuff up there with videos and pictures and a lot of different updates on what games we're going to be covering. You can also follow us on Twitter at Boston City TV. And if you want to tweet at us, use the hashtag Boston G O W. Well, they had a nice little 7 0 run mission, did to cut it down to 11, but immediately answered with a 6 0 run for Team New England. And Mission right now needs to play five man basketball on offense. They're trying to go one on one too much, and those one on one opportunities, when they get stopped, inevitably they're turning the ball over and then there were other four guys who are just looking and saying why weren't you trying to evolve us more and that's been a big reason why they were forced to call a timeout there not just the run but the fact that a lot of their players looked upset get a foul at the top of the key as Ward was trying to make his way into the paint I mean, it worked out because they drew the foul but Ward has to look up he had a wide open teammate Rooney in the corner knocks down another three that's the guy you got to find right now. He's the one guy with the hot hand. And you also got to find the wide open man on the other end. That's 
Number seven there, uh, Anya, with an easy layup. And Anya upset. Trying to come right back. I really like Anya's game, maybe even a little bit more than Muhammad. He's not quite as tall, but he's shown that jump shot, and he's been able to run in transition. He's a, he's a really nice, you could call him a little player, because uh, he's taller than I am, and he's <laughs> 15 at the oldest. Uh, but coming off the bench, it's, it's a real advantage, because if he was on mission, he'd be in the starting lineup guarding Muhammad. Instead, Joe Chapman just has a wealth of riches on his roster, and he's using the entire bench, and every single one of those guys has brought something to the table. What? Joe Chapman yelling to his players during the uh, slight stoppage. Push the ball even more, run even faster. He wants to try to tire this mission team down that already looks a little dejected down by 15. Fight for the rebound inside. Anya, no good. Rebound comes down to Ward. Ward putting in a lot of work, both rebounding and bringing the ball up sometimes for admission. Rooney looking for an opening down to the corner. Three pointer, no good. It's really only been Rooney who's been able to knock down any outside shots. Good steal that time from Guevara. Galarza gets it poked away. Now it's O'Toole. What a block down the other end by Galarza. But we got a foul inside, so it looks like two more free throws for Team New England. That was a tremendous block from Galarza from behind, timing it perfectly, able to knock it away from Ofotole. Only problem was they only had one other guy back versus three for Team New England. Anu knocking down the first free throw. 16 point lead for Team New England. Anu now with nine points for Team New England. Make that 10 as he's two for two from the strike. He might have the best stroke on the team. Just looked so clean, didn't even catch any of the rim. Two for two on the day, 10 total points. Really nice game for Kalu Anu. <laughs> Try to feed it inside. That was a nice press break for Mission, and it almost led to points, but what they don't recognize, they were frustrated they didn't score there, is they stepped out of the bounds. The only problem was the ref didn't see it because the pace was so high. So they turn it over there. Back down the other end, Brandon Bennett scoring the layup for Team New England. This second half is being played at Team New England's pace. They're pushing the pace, they're forcing even more turnovers, and they're just a deeper team. Timmy O'Toole. Everybody getting involved for Team New England right now. Two chasing down a steal. Anu. We get an open lane to the basket, but he gets tripped up. And they're going to call a foul on Ward. Yeah, this is a tough time, but remember, Mission, despite the fact that it looks bad right now, down 41 to 20, they're the top seed. So this loss is going to hurt. It's going to hurt their confidence a little bit, but they're the top seed. They're going to get a slightly more favorable draw. Team New England with the win will still have uh, three losses. This is just the second loss for Mission. So. Mission right now, they've got 6.25 to go. The biggest focus here is not cutting the 21-point deficit to zero. It's figuring out a way for them to play where they can actually compete. If they can go even or like plus four, plus five, the next 6.25, that's something that Charles Davis can spin into a positive for this team heading into the playoffs. Tool off the inbounds pass gets an open look. Put back is good to Timmy O'Toole. And it's going to start on the defensive glass. They have to box out. They don't have the size in any of the five positions to jump one-on-one -on -one with the opposing team, so they have to do a better job of putting a body on the offensive player. Mad scramble for the loose ball as Mission hangs on to it. Almost a turnover. Rooney, 43, buries another one. Loves that spot. 
That's the highest percentage shot on the floor. That corner three, the shortest three, the easiest bucket from distance. And off the spin move, it's Anya. Only, the problem, runner. only problem for Michigan is every time they score, they seem to give up baskets on the next two possessions. Haven't been able to really cut into that deficit with the exception of that short 7-0 run. Wilson to steal, layup from Ofa Dahlin. This is a track meet right now with some basketball involved. This team New England just looks so good in transition. They're not only taller and longer, but they're a little bit more skilled. Yeah, they have, you know, talk about like stretch four type of players. Their bigs are those kind of guys. You see Anu and Ofadale and some of those longer guys, and they run the floor so well, like you mentioned. That's where you get your, get your rebounding from, too. And this is going to be a tough matchup for anybody in the postseason here in BNBL. Richard Damas, he's got an update for us. Richard, what do you have? So interestingly enough, Pat, Coach Chapman of Team New England actually competed against Coach Chuck Davis as a player back in the, back when he was a child in high school for the BNBL Under-15 tournament. Now he's competing against him as a coach. Crazy enough, Coach Chapman says that the rivalry's not there yet, but these two teams actually have a history with each other with Coach Chapman actually defeating Coach Charles Davis after he had won 16 titles straight. And it looks like Coach Chapman is going to get the upper hand on him once again. Thanks very much, Richard. And the three-pointer that time is no good from Rooney. Yeah, Coach Joe Chapman, very good player in Boston in his heyday. Played against Coach Davis like Richard Damas mentioned. So certainly uh, a lot of familiarity with him. And then the Spartans won the 13 and under uh, BNBL championship last year. So one, it, it just shows the kind of guy that that Chuck Davis is, or because not only has he been coaching a while, uh, but Joe Chapman, I mean, I, I've only known Joe Chapman as an assistant coach, now a head coach at the college level. So Chuck Davis has been doing this for so long, and he's smiling on the sideline right now. He knows that this is just a regular season game. His team's in a good spot. He's totally relaxed. And also, he's won 16 of these BNBL titles, so he knows that sometimes you're going to take those bumps and bruises. On the other side, Joe Chapman, he says it's not a rivalry. That's because he doesn't think he's gained the kind of respect that Chuck Davis has. That's why Chapman, despite being up by 24, is the one screaming instructions right now, wanting even better play out of his team. Three ball on the way, but it's short. Put back, no good. Second rebound. Put back, no good. Anya with another rebound. Gets the basket and one. New England all over the offensive glass. That was the fourth take of the offensive possession. And it started, Felder didn't really take a great three, just hoisted it up. And there were only two guys down low. Anya there is surrounded by three red shirts. Gets the rebound, draws the contact, hits the shot. Chuck Davis has his work cut out for him in the next game. Unless he's got a, a couple guys who aren't here today who... Uh, stand at six foot or taller, they're gonna have to figure out better press breaks. They're gonna have to figure out a, a way to pressure the ball a little bit more. And they're really gonna have to work on their box outs because that, that's been the biggest issue today. Yes, their free throw shooting, shooting hurt them. Yes, their turnovers hurt them. But I mean, they could excel in those other two categories and still probably lose if they're giving up this many second, third, fourth, fifth chance points. Anya knocks down that free throw, then he substituted out. Now you see Coach Chapman and some of his assistant coaches coaching Anya. It seems like Coach Chapman's coaching him hard. You know, they, when you're that good and you have that kind of talent, the coach is going to pay attention to you a lot and try to hone your skills when you have. These guys are 15 and under. That's the scary part to me. I mean, you could put this team up against some 18 and under teams, not all of them, but some of them. And while they might not be as physically mature, the fact that they do play together all year long, the fact that they do have some pretty good size, I think they would compete at the next level, which is scary because they won at the 13 under level. They're looking very good at the 15 under level. And this group still has a couple years to develop together. And then eventually they'll play together at 18 under, and they're going to be a favorite then. Yeah, they could be one of those. Uh, BNBL dynasty types almost. The showstoppers on the girls' side. Showstoppers, and we have Lee School on the boys' side, so we'll see how it shakes out. But as we mentioned before, Tobin, one of the more talented, or most, a lot of talent coming out of this facility, just like the Perkins out in Dorchester.
like you said, Seth, you know, we don't know if there's a player missing from mission. We don't know if, you know, they, they're just not playing as many guys. You know, Coach Davis did mention to Richard, our sideline reporter before the game, that he's not going to play his starters as much. Well, and, and that's the really tough part when it comes to the NBL, because we don't see these teams every week. We get to see some of these teams during the regular season, and some of them we don't see till the championship. And even then, we don't know who the best team is, because if a team has three players go on vacation during the playoffs, then one of the best teams might not end up in UMass Boston, might not end up winning the whole thing. I mean, the biggest thing about this is it's great to win a championship, but BNBL more than anything is about player development. High school teams, AAU teams, they want to win championships, all that, but BNBL, I mean, Joe Chapman wants to win a title. Chuck Davis wants to win a title. But more than anything, these guys should be better when they head back to high school. These guys should have improved upon skills, whether here in these games or in practice, but also on their own, working on maybe the left hand, hitting that three-point shot, the, el the corner elbow shot. These are things that you need to work on if you're gonna get more minutes in high school. No question. Some of these guys will be playing against each other in high school as well. Even you might have a teammate in BNBL who's going to be a high school opponent later on in the winter time. As the corner three well off the mark, but another offensive putback that time. Keontae Beals. Yeah, Mari Ward looks a little worn down there. Didn't get a good box uh, box out or any kind of part of his body on the body of Muhammad. And right now, the tough part for a lot of these mission players is their ones, twos, and threes, and they're playing two spots up, three spots up. So just need to keep the focus on the fact that maybe this won't be the case every single game. It's just something you have to deal with today. Anthony Guevara with that one, then all of a sudden right back comes Tony Felder. You mentioned before, Seth, each, each time Mission hits a basket, New England comes right back with one of their own and answers. And that might be something that Joe Chapman's team told them at his assistant coach has said at halftime to his team, we nice don't run. want them getting that run. We want to answer back every single time and, and shut them out both physically and mentally. Amari Ward with a real nice drive. He'll get the basket and the foul to try to complete a three-point play. And he does. So a nice play there from Omari Ward, who's had a couple of three-point plays near the second half for Team Mission. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit more aggressive next game if they do play uh, this Team New England team again. He and Rooney, they need to look for their shots early in the game, get an offensive uh, focus going for their team. Because remember, they were stuck on two points, both free throws, for about six, seven minutes into this game. They never really got off going offensively until it's too late. Rooney no good on the runner. Now tries a corner three, and that is going to do it here at the Tobin Community Center. Very impressive win from Team New England as they take down Team Mission 56 to 33. And you know, going into this game, we thought it might be a lot closer, certainly with the pedigree that these two uh, BNBL programs have. But when he, Chuck Davis mentioned he might be sitting some of his guys or at least not playing them as much, then you see the size on the Spartans team. They must have been missing a couple of these guys throughout the summer, which often happens. You know, guys are on vacation. Guys are going to camps. Guys are playing on AAU. They're doing a lot of different things. They're working at night during the summer. So some of these guys might have missed some games because I don't see how they would even lose a game here at the Tobin Community Center with that kind of Well, time. I think that this was their second or third meeting supposed to have meeting against Mission, and the first two times they missed because of AAU tournaments, which makes right. sense. I mean, they have three losses. Maybe they played in one of those games and lost, because it right. is a competitive site. There's a couple other teams with two or three losses. But this team is so complete, and that's what you see when you have teams uh, that are fostered at the AU level as well as the BNBL, because they have great ball handlers, they have good shooters, and then they have not one big, but two bigs and a couple of guys who are playing the four who are very skilled rebounders. I mean, you go up and down this roster and every single guy made an impact today. And that's the big thing with good teams. It's not one or two stars. It's 10, 11, 12 guys who know their role and who get the job done. And that's often the qualifications for a BNBL championship team that we often see at the end of the summer. Folks, we're going to head to break. When we come back, we'll have our Game of the Week MVP, our game-winning coach, and our final stats here from the Tobin Community Center in Roxbury right after these words. Don't go away.
foster safety. Foster hope. Foster joy. Foster curiosity. Foster support. Become a foster parent. Because every parent makes a difference. Foster Massachusetts. Hey, look, it's those guys. Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. First time I tried biking and it was laying around my mom's house. And then I kept taking them whenever I could get them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mine. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Do you want to retire like a champ? Just like legendary basketball star Uncle Drew? Don't do it like that, Uncle Drew! You're already acing the game. You've got your dream ride. Don't be slamming my door. Sorry about that. Uh, you just did the nah, same. Gotta get the boys. Your dream vacation and your dream team. And now you can make your retirement just as legendary. I get buckets. Get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Queen is just my everything. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. No doubt you're going places, young lady. Thank you. And thank you for the interview as well. I can imagine it was the last thing that you wanted to do after such a long campaign meeting. You really are a very intelligent young woman. You're very smooth. You're very smooth yourself. <laughs> you have no idea. Why is my son having trouble in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm tired of fighting with my son over his homework. Home, walk, restaurant, need a review? No, he's smart, but his mind wanders. Seven wonders of the world. Why don't you understand me? I do. I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. 
Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat right or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? Planning the right amount of food is hard. The guesstimator makes it easy. Just tell it who's coming and what's for dinner. Then it tells you how much to make. And yes, it even plans for leftovers. Try it at savethefood.com. We just, just finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time, time for homework. homework. He hates hate homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Welcome back to the Tobin Community Center in Roxbury. At the conclusion of Game of the Week, Team New England took down Mission 56-33 here in the boys' BNBL 15 and under division. And a lot of good players for Team New England tonight. A lot of guys contributed, but Anya was certainly the best player out there. I mean, offensive rebounds, putbacks, knocked out some jumpers. He was kind of all over the place. He's a very versatile player, very impressive game for him tonight. Well, Anya has a great role in this team because he's coming off the bench. You see Abdullah Muhammad, and you're thinking, oh, this is the go-to guy. But Anya's a little bit more refined offensively, and he has the advantage of coming off the bench. He faced a, a mission team that didn't have the same kind of substitution patterns, didn't have the same kind of size, and he took advantage. That's the most important thing about your, your player of the game. It's not always the best player, and I'm not saying he's not, but he's the player who took advantage of his opportunities today. I'm sure that if we saw these teams play ten times, we'd have a different MVP eight or nine times because they have That's that true. much talent on their team. But Anya did a great job on the boards today, and he showed off the different kinds of offensive skills he has. He ran in transition, he hit some jumpers, had a really nice shot on the free throw line. He definitely deserved our MVP today. No question. Mr. Anya and Coach Chapman are with our sideline reporter, Richard Dama. So, Richard, take it away. I'm here with Coach Chapman and Kalu Anya. Kalu, 15 points, 7 rebounds, 5 steals. What led to this type of performance tonight? Uh, I think it was my coach because before I wasn't as aggressive, but now I'm aggressive because he's pushing me to be as confident I am now. So I thank him for that. So with this win tonight, you guys are officially in the tournament for the playoffs. How does that feel? It feels amazing because it's kind of like, as a little kid, I always wanted to play basketball, and I grew up now playing basketball. And now I'm, I'm with the elite team, a sponsor team, and now we're going to vote this. And I'm glad that we're able to make playoffs. Because tomorrow we'll have my coach and two teammates, but we're still going to win the one, I believe. Yeah, so you're feeling pretty confident about this tournament, huh? Yeah. Well, Kalu, congratulations on tonight's performance, man, and good luck in the tournament. You'll do great. Thank you. Coach. 15, five steals, seven boards, 15 points. How's he doing it? I want to do more. 
I want him to do more. I um, I told him when he first came to us a couple months ago, he has a proto a basketball body, right? You look at him, you know, he's eighth grader, long arms, big feet, gonna be about six eight when it's all said and done. You see, he showed every aspect of his game tonight. He showed you a perimeter jump shot. He showed you he could face up. And the beauty of his game is he can do more when he wants to be aggressive. The next level for him now is to be alert every play defensively and to treat every possession like it's meaningful. Because sometimes, you know, at their age, you, you, you slack off a couple possessions, and he's learning how to be better with that now. So. I heard you talking a lot in the huddle after the game about getting back on defense. Why is that so important for you guys heading into this tournament? Because we don't like to give up any easy baskets. Um, we like to get easy baskets because we like the pace to be up and down, but we don't like to give up easy baskets. So the best way to not give up easy baskets is to, when you press, just because the ball might be ahead of you, you sprint back and get ahead of the basketball to make sure you're not giving up easies. And after a while, you just see a team wear down. And that's what eventually happened tonight. And it looked like you really had them wearing down in the second half. You guys were really able to pile on that lead. You almost got to 30. What adjustments did you make in the second half that allowed you guys to kind of run away with the game? I told them if they didn't play hard enough, I would have subbed in people in the stands. Um, and, and, and they know my expectation in all seriousness. They, this team is special. I told you it's a group of eighth graders, right? But most majority of these kids are 14 years old. We have two seventh graders on the team, like I told you before. So. Playing the right way is something we stress. And at halftime, you know, like I mentioned to you, the, the game was too slow. We scored 22 points the first half, 37, 38, whatever it was in the second half, right? We gave up nine points in the first half, but gave up, you know, was it 23 points in the second, 22 points in the second? But the game was at our pace. So I don't mind giving up some points when the game's at our pace because eventually, like you said, they wore down, and they did. They had a bench of two guys on their bench with five starters that played the majority of the game. Coach, good luck in the postseason. Yes. I think you guys are going to do great. I hope so. I'll be watching. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Guys you. Are great. All right. Thank you. And with that being said, the playoffs will start tomorrow. Should be really fun, Pat. I'll send it over back to you. Richard, thanks very much. And Coach Chapman, uh, probably coaching his BNBL team like he's coaching his Pine Manor college team. Uh, I was about to say, this year. typically you have that 10 minute cool down session at the college level. He took at least 10 minutes after the game after a 56 33 win. I, I liked what some of what he was saying, though, he re recognizes the age difference. I mean, when his college players take a playoff, they're getting immediately pulled. That's right. a little different at the 1500 level. Sure. Um, but the free points and the fact that. The pace, he gave out 24 points in the second half and was happier with the defense, it, defense in that half than the nine points in the first half when he knew it could have been a lot more. They outscored the opponents 34 to 22, I want to say, in the second half. I think my math might be a little closer, but I think we're still off by a little. But 34 to 22, and it was at their pace. It was their style of play, and it could have been a lot worse, not for the fact that at, at some point, Mission just decided, okay, we're going to get a couple late points just to try to make this a bit more respectable. Joe Chapman is bringing the same intensity that he uses with his college players here, and it's going to help these players not only adjust for BMBL and for high school, but for those who do go on to the college level. It's going to be a really good step for them because they're used to college coaching. No question. It's certainly, you know, Coach Chapman doing them a solid here as he's coaching at the, the, in the college style, like you mentioned, uh, for this basketball team. Let's take a look at the final stats from this game before we sign off here from the Tobin Community Center in Roxbury. And first up, it's team mission stats. Well, Rooney really came alive. He was the big-time three-point shooter, and it scored the majority of their points. Ward, their top rebounder throughout the season, he was a little frustrated today, but he did have six points and seven uh, seven points and six rebounds and then assists. There weren't too many of them. It was a little bit too much isolation, uh, but one assist a piece for Rooney and Ward. Those two guys, they're big players all season long. They had big games today, just not big enough against a slightly better New England team on the night. And next up, it's Team New England stats. Well, Anya, our player of the game, he had 15, 12 from Beals. Anya also had seven rebounds. And Beals had a nice day with those five assists. Muhammad, six rebounds, probably had three or four blocks. And Felder, the man who makes it all go, he had four assists to go along with quite a few points and steals of his own. No question. So as you mentioned before, Seth, 
This team is loaded. They got a lot of different players that contributed. You see that on the statue. A lot of players doing a lot of different things for this team, New England team, who we could see in just uh, about a week and a half over at UMass Boston for the BNBL Championships. Folks, want to thank you for joining us here at Tobin Community Center here on Game of the Week. If you want to watch this game again, you can go to our website, www.cityofboston.gov slash game of the week. All the games from this BNBL season are up there, so make sure you check that out. You can also go to our Facebook page. Follow us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash game of the week Boston. A lot of good stuff up on that website. Make sure you like us on Facebook. A lot of good videos, updates, great stuff there. You can also follow us on Twitter at Boston City TV. And if you want to tweet at us, use the hashtag Boston G O W. This was the last night of the regular season. Championships are just a little over a week away. Always fun and always crazy. This year they're at UMass Boston. Should be a great time for everybody in the BNBL. But for right now, we're going to say so long from the Tobin Community Center. We'll see you next time on Game of the Week. Take care, everybody.